Hey, what's up, everyone? This is a special edition of the Colin and Samir Show. Considering what has transpired this week in the creator community with David Dobrik and, and members of the Vlog Squad, we've gotten a lot of messages and requests to cover this topic. We've spoken about David Dobrik and made multiple videos about him on this channel. I think all of you know that he's someone we cover very closely, and we've been talking about it so much this week that we felt like we just wanted to make a quick episode midweek here to open up a space for a conversation and talk to all of you about what we've taken away from this situation and what we think other creators can learn uh, from everything that's transpired over the past couple of weeks. So to be clear, we're not going to really take you through the events. There's a lot of that on the internet. You can go out check out the videos. We'll, we'll link stuff in the description if you want to take yourself through what has transpired. But we are going to focus on the, the conversation that we've had internally and some of the lessons we think that we can take from this. And then as a, as a broader creator community, the lessons that we can all take. After reading the article where this news broke from Business Insider, it was heartbreaking to read. And as creators, very difficult to think about someone being put in that type of position especially put in that position in the context of making videos and what you think is this like environment that's supposed to be about ideas and bringing ideas to life. And that millions of people are enjoying digitally right. to think that there is a nightmare behind it. I think that was, that was one of the toughest things to hear about and to try and like truly understand this experience is like having to relive it through the content and, and conversation and, and the confusion around, uh, I think Phil DeFranco mentioned this, the confusion around like the excitement of being featured in David Dobrik vlog and then the backstory or like your own personal experience experience with it. That has to be really hard. So tough to like truly try and fully empathize and, and understand it because it is such a personal experience for someone, but it's it's a heartbreaking thing to read and is something that I think we all have to really take a look at and, and think about how do we ensure something like this doesn't happen in our community, right? Like how do we help the creator community understand how to grow and mature from this to a point where this is not a conversation and not an article that we read and not an article that needs to get made? Yeah, I mean, our industry is different. It has very much not been in the spotlight for a long time. And now it is increasingly in the spotlight. And yeah. I think because this community, uh, the creator community has done things very differently. It's also upon us to keep these types of things from happening. That's what the episode is going to be about. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about here is the lessons that we all have to take from this experience and ensuring that it doesn't happen again. So the first thing that we've been speaking about uh, is something that David Dobrik actually touched on in his most recent apology video. And that's taking accountability for the environment that you create and that you foster as a creator. And moreover, what happens in the workplace, right? Like the, the actual physical space you create and the environment and the culture that lives in that physical space. What you said to me that, that really struck was when you're a creator like David, where the set begins and ends is really blurry but it is your set. You know, you do have to take responsibility for environment you're creating on set. Same way that any other company or, or, or Hollywood studio would have to take accountability for what happens on set. It's the same way, but it's really blurry and confusing because you're living that life. Which means you need to be extra careful about yeah. what happens when you turn the camera on and in your environment. What we've seen, and we talk about this a lot when we watch different creators, especially young creators, Sometimes we feel like there needs to be an adult in the room. There needs to be someone there who is overseeing sort of what's happening. And what this situation with David Dobrik has really shown is that, you know, once you turn the camera on like this as a creator, you are the adult in the room, even if you are young. Once you make that move to be someone who has a set and a show and you're directing people around and creating an environment, you are now the adult and you have to be. There's something going around on Twitter and Instagram this week around the study that shows how many kids want to be a YouTuber or a blogger. And so it's important to pull away these lessons and recognize like, yeah, that's really cool. And we spend our days trying to educate and, and empower this next generation of creators. And legitimize and this legitimize, career yeah. and this industry. And so the important thing to note is like, yeah, it's super fun and it's exciting to, to grow an audience and become a creator and, and put yourself on camera. But there's this, this layer that's, that's super important, which is the responsibility that comes with putting yourself on camera, having influence, being a creator that has a big audience or even, even a small audience. Whatever that is, you have a ton of influence over your environment, over your audience, and, and that's really important to recognize and to, to look and really have a high level of scrutiny over what you're putting out. The industry is growing up quickly, and I think the coverage of it is testament to that. 
the fact that the, the coverage is providing now accountability, right? Because there are so many people looking at this industry more than ever before. To tack on to that, you know, if you are recognizing as a creator, you, you do like to think outside of the box or, or whatever, and you, you want a little bit more creative freedom, then put a checkpoint, right? Work with a manager or a producer or someone who's, who is the adult in the room to constantly filter through. And I even think that if you even do have that level of responsibility, like still have a trusted person, check out the content and check out the ideas and like run it through a third party because like you mentioned, the industry is growing up and as creators, this is no longer, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just filming videos and having fun. Like you're influencing millions and millions and millions of people. This is a real business. There's like a ton of money involved now. There's a lot of exposure and awareness and whatever ideology or, or culture that you're, you're putting out there, like these are culture shifters. And, you know, that comes with a level of, of just responsibility and, and a level of organization, especially when you get to that scale, you have to build a team around yourself. That's like, what are the checkpoints this idea has to go through to get out to millions of people? you have to create that process. The next thing I think it's really important to talk about is what was this environment? You know, there's a lot of talk around taking accountability for the environment that you're creating. But specifically in this instance, like the environment was toxic masculinity. You know, that is something that got supercharged, I believe, by having power dynamics, right? By having someone who did have a lot of control from a media perspective, by having a lot of followers. But just being in an environment that is toxic because of toxic masculinity is something that exists outside of the bounds of whether there is a like media power dynamic taking place. And that's something that I think should be talked about to prevent these types of things from taking place, whether they are on a set or they're just in real life. Mm -hmm. Making sure that as young men who've spent a lot of time on sports teams and, and surrounded by a lot of men, that you are taking into account uh, the people that are around you, the environment that's being created, that you're not encouraging other men to fall into like the stereotypes of being dominant, yeah. aggressive, uh, lacking emotion or empathy, because that's what creates these types of environments. Yep. And I, I think that the, in terms of what I mentioned around being a culture shifter, like that's the opportunity with creators. If you get to a certain scale and you're, you're talented at storytelling and you're talented at connecting with an audience, like your opportunity is actually to shift the culture and shift away from from some of that and and be more open and counter some of the pre-existing culture that does exist in those settings and power dynamics and and like you mentioned being on sports teams and whatnot. Now of course like it's still YouTube. You can do whatever you want. And that's gonna be the challenge of the space moving forward. But the opportunity is for all of us, fans, people in the community to open up and, and have more discussion about this and hold each all of each other accountable. And the people who truly understand how powerful this stuff is need to probably step up and step in at times and, and foster conversation and be okay with having uncomfortable conversations to, to mature the space together. And knowing that we have a crop of young kids right behind us who are like aspiring to do this exact same, same thing and to build towards the level of, of, uh, influence and the level of, of creativity and, and everything that they're seeing the top creators do, that's when you start to realize how important that, that, that group of top creators is to the, the trailing long tail of all these kids who are growing up with the internet. Like how much were the TikTok kids influenced by, you know, Logan and Jake Paul and all, all these other people, right? And you start to recognize like there's a ripple effect here. However, this group of creators acts is going to influence the creators and 10 years from now or five years. And that as a collective community is what we have to take responsibility for. You know, a lot of our audience is made up of, of fellow creators. I think that's where we wanted to take this conversation and open it up to, hey, what are, what are the lessons here for creators? Like, how do you move forward in this situation? And just to recap it, like it's, it's about taking responsibility for the environment you're creating, thinking about yourself as as a business and as a company and fostering a, a good culture and environment, recognizing the influence you have and understanding that and taking responsibility for that and surrounding yourself with adults or with people you trust and with processes that can help make sure that you're not getting too far away from, you know, your own core values and and too far away from the broader vision of having the creator economy take off. And to make sure that people don't get hurt along yeah, the way. Absolutely.
Yeah, we'd love to hear, you know, everyone's thoughts on this. This is a space for for open conversation and discussion and and that's what's important for all of us to progress and move forward is what do we all take from this? How do we move forward? How do we make sure that the the whole creator community becomes more evolved, more mature and recognizes what's the key takeaway from all of this? Thanks to all of you who tagged us on Twitter and wrote in the comments, uh, asked us to talk about this topic. It's something that we've been talking about really every single day and sending each other links back and forth about. There's been so much interesting coverage and discussion taking place online. Uh, so, and that's what we wanted to do here was really just open up this video in the comments uh, as a place to have discussion about uh, what's been taking place and you know, hopefully progress the creator economy in a more positive direction. So we'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Colin and Samir show, but we really appreciate all of you guys being here and, and being open to, to hearing our perspective and sharing your perspective with us. So we'll see you guys on Monday.